Let's open it up and bring everybody back up here on stage, and we'll give you an opportunity to ask some questions as well. My question was just how often do you as a psychiatrist, Dr. Ackberg, encounter a couple as supportive of each other? Because I've heard sometimes when couples go through very severe trauma such as this, it often erodes their relationship. It, it, it's a good question. And back when I was a resident, which was Stanford in the 60s, we were told that the divorce rate from prolonged uh, traumatic exposure, like being the parents of a leukemic child, was up around 70%. And sometimes the big difference is that one partner is a talker and the other partner is the silent type. And it's hard to be compatible when on the one hand you really want to tell the story. You, you, you have a need to share and to get a reaction. And if you're of the other disposition, you really want the privacy um, and you don't want to be asked questions. And you, you, you don't want your feelings to be exposed when, when you don't have control over your feelings yourself. So that can be a, a, a very disruptive situation. Uh, I stayed with a couple who were both teachers at Columbine. One was in the school in which the shooting took place, and the other was the wrestling coach at the school where the kids uh, ended up graduating that year. And they were a very supportive couple. They reminded me. Uh, somewhat of, of the, the crosses. But uh, at one point, he says to me, Frank, when is she going to get over it? He, he wanted to stop listening, but he really wanted to be very supportive to his, his wife at, at the same time. Um, I think Dan and Pat have been an extremely supportive couple, but they, they seldom were with me at the same time, so I didn't have the chance to witness that emotional and, and, and physical connection. So it's, it's been relatively rare in my experience. I wouldn't offer a percentage to say that 10% of the time you see it and 90% of the time you don't. But I, I, I was struck by it when I, when I did see it. You know, it's interesting, Frank. You started a talk. He, he looked at her. They both smiled at one another. He grabbed <laughs> her hand. Uh, that support <laughs> is still very much evident today. Right. W one of the two of you, more of a talker, and the other one, you were the talker. And did it, did it create any kind of stress at any point? To... It really didn't. Um, I needed to talk about our son all the time. I just wanted to talk about, even to Frank, just and anybody that would listen. Every, I just wanted to talk about him constantly. And Brant is more of a listener. So he was, I mean, he would interject things sometimes. Well, obviously at Frank's office. and yeah. But um, I'm the one that's always needed to talk more. So, but uh, he was always very supportive and just, we were always, it just seemed like we were on the right clock or something. When I needed him, he was there. When he needed me, I was able to offer him that support. So we were lucky that way that we yeah. just always kind of were on the same page, so. Yeah. Well, after this, just before this happened to our son, um, I had left the job I had been previously employed at. And fortunately, as a family, we had circumstances where once this incident happened, it, like I said, our world that we had built and worked so hard to build had crumbled right around us at that time. So I sort of looked at it as sort of we had to rebuild what we had, which I think we've done a good job, but it's still, it's going to be a, a forever project. I decided to retire at that point, um, which I did, which allowed me to spend a lot of time with this wonderful woman. And so we've, we've shared a lot of time together. Um, we are best friends, and we're going to be on our... 29th wedding anniversary coming up, and it's been 29 wonderful years, and we've had a big bump in the road, but we're survivors and we'll get through it. 